limited, and I think you can't get it. You can't buy it. Oh, you can buy a trophy. Wow. You can't. You can't buy it. Like, if this is a trophy, that's awesome because you know you normally can't get it. Yeah. And right now we are getting to an actual match. Oh, oh, Maverick and Aron actually play. I know they're actually in the um, in the top uh, what top eight. Yeah, this is our top eight. And uh, by the way, Maverick and Aron right now because the only player who is not from France is Deflor, and we have Deflor army obviously uh, from Greece. But uh, we have a lot of French players. We have seven French players. And uh, I was just uh, trying to see, like, who are the best guys. And you know what? Aran and Maverick are the best guys. They're the best guys left in this tournament. Aran is uh, a really, really big player in France. Like, he, he won a lot. Uh, he's really respected. And, um, and same with Maverick. Like, he, he won versus the official before. We've seen this live. And uh, one of the top players for France, right now, they will be fighting for their uh, life or death. Best of five, four decks, one ban. Who will advance it to four? All right. And the US just appeared. Perfect. We saw Maverick before, actually, the other day. And he played pretty well. Uh, Aran is, um, you know, he's a new face on our stream. But I'm sure that he did pretty well to get through the Swiss and to win two series in the um, in the playoffs. So we should expect some good plays here. He's playing the uh, Freeze Mage, I believe, with the Antonidas variants and over in Maverick's side looks pretty much like a normal shaman for now um he's gonna hmm, he might go for feral spirits here first would you feral spirit or unbound is there any reason to unbound well if you unbound and feral spirits you get to buff it but you don't get to play a drake which is kind of annoying you kind of do want to play the drake and then i mean if you do have a flames on the next turn following up the Ferris Spirits is actually not that bad. Because at the same time, you're, you're um, how do you say it? Like, you, Flames should just close your board. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say. So if you can squeeze in more damage early on, it could be beneficial. I like playing Ferris Spirits because uh, of what you mentioned with mana efficiency. Like, Ferris Spirits now, on turn four, you can still use your two mana to play Flame Tongue or even a, a, a Totem Up. And then Azure into Fire, fire Elemental. Because if you don't play for spirits now, then in the later turns you might have problems. Like your your turns will be kind of awkward with mana. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. The, the the one thing as well is that if he does play, if Maverick does choose the Feral spirits here, he will have to have a very bad turn five, like very bad turn five. I would I would say. Well, he could top deck something. I don't know. Like an Earth Shock into an Acolyte. Maybe. Yeah, Earth Shock into Acolyte would be. Pretty good. I guess the Acolyte is actually dying here. Okay. So, I guess he's not going to use the Feral Spirits until later then, huh? Until Flame Strike. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Uh, over well, at uh, the major side, don't see a lot of answers right now. So, I guess he's just going to keep on slowing the game. He's just going to use, you know... Uh, probably Arcane Intellect or the Ice Barrier. Uh, what he chooses is definitely up to him. If you get uh, Arcane Intellect into a Doomsayer, you might be able to clear the board. Uh, we do know that there's a Hex uh, in, in the hand of Mavericks. I mean, if you Hex, uh, or Hex or Earthshock, uh, Doomsayer is worth it already. So, yeah. Well, basically, from the main side, you want to limit the damage as much as possible and give yourself time to draw into the combo and then Alex draws them and burst them. Unless you actually are able to use Antonidas and produce a couple of fireballs to be able to burst them from 30. Shaman doesn't have that much heal, um, if, if any at all. So if you're able to, to deal with the board, you put yourself in a really good position. All right. So, yeah, all right, it's two plays. And... By Ice Bear being playable, we're pretty sure that the secret is an Ice Block. That goes with that instead. And with one mana, I'm pretty sure you're not going to do anything. Okay, cross the barrier. Feral Spirit. Oh, really? Huh. Interesting. By the way, are we synced? Yeah, when you said Feral Spirits, he was just hovering the card. So a little bit off. We're a little bit behind. But, yeah, I guess more or less we're good. And the Healing okay. Tomb is actually going to be pretty good here. 
Oh yeah, it's perfect versus mage. So what I'm going to do, Amaz, I'm going to say phrases really slowly so that you can actually catch up with the stream. Okay, that's a good strategy. I like that. <laughs> My work. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's the full board. So, yeah, I mean, like, I, you're pretty much going to flame strike a turn uh, later or like a two turns after. So, basically, setting up yourself to uh, not take damage, damage, and make it so that you could clear everything. Uh, the healing totem makes it very, very difficult. And if you frostbolt the flame tongue, I mean, sure, you're kind of cool with that, but at the same time, you're not really cool with that. So, uh, how much damage? How much damage is this? Is this basically what eight, ten, twelve? Yeah, twelve so damage on the board. So you frost Nova just to, like stop twelve damage and then flame strike next turn. Yeah, I would assume that that has to be the play. There's just too much damage right now on the board. Oh no! So that's what happens when you have a full board. You can't play anything. Well, he can still rock biter, and hex. But do you want really to use the hex? I, I I would consider it, because the possible hex targets in mage are Antonidas, Alex Traza, and if you are able to just deal with the with the secret, because the two two is not a problem. The problem is that he can get whatever like uh, as barrier from the deck, mm -hmm. and then increase his chances to draw into the cards he needs because the deck is getting thinner. Also, like get a free mana secret for free. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, so it, the Mad Scientist does represent a free healing touch in another way. Oh, wow. I'm saying it slowly, but I'm seeing an Alex Traza top deck. Oh, we see it, but it's not top deck yet. It's like a, it's just a draw right now. Okay, it's yeah. But yeah. it's better to have it in hand. Just in, yeah, of course, just, of course. Sometimes Alex Traza just ends up to be the last card, and you're in a really weird spot. But right now, he can actually play... Um, for the combo, like he can play to win because he knows that he has the most important piece in hand. Yeah, and one of the main cards that are important for a shaman to deal with uh, mage is just a weapon, a doom hammer. Makes it really, really good. Earthshock makes it really good too because you know you can earthshock your own creatures and uh, charge with them, uh, not charge but attack with them, and it gives the mage you know something to worry about. But so far we don't have any of those cards in Maverick's hand, so. I would say that the Freeze Mage is winning right now. That's oh yes, certainly. Yeah. I would agree. He is in a really good spot. Uh, he only he's only staring at six points of damage. He has a lot of armor, a lot of life, and uh, a lot of cards. Uh, maybe after drawing into double Doomsayer, he doesn't have that much draw, so he still has to get the, the combo pieces. But oh, it doesn't. That that could be fun. That could be good. Hmm. So, you save Alec here for next turn, and you do 10 damage. So, right now you have what? Not that much damage, I guess. Still. Mm -hmm. And there Ten. is another Ice Block. So, whatever happens. So, basically, what's really important is to play Alex Traza when you have, when you have an Ice Block up. He has an Ice Block, and I don't see a way for the Shaman to deal 24 next turn. Yeah. I think he's 3 damage off, judging by what we're seeing here. Actually, is it three damage? Yeah, oh wait, Alakir does 12, right? 23. He's actually one damage off of plugging the trap. Uh, assuming that the Syrian Children stays alive. So now he's two off. Yeah, he's two damage off. Oh wow, okay. This is a huge draw. Is it? Oh my, oh. Uh, oh okay, eh. wait, he doesn't have mana. He's one mana of rocking Ice Block. Yeah, he's one mana up for as well. But then the thing is, like, if you go all in right now, you're losing your board. And that's just crappy. It feels like you're one turn behind, right? I mean, sure, you can Argus right now and clear the Doomsayer. But then you don't proc the Ice Block and Alistraza is going to drop next turn. And then you can clear the Ice Block, but then your opponent can, like, just burst you down and Ice Block again. So it seems just, it just seems like you're one damage, well, like, one turn off. Yeah, it seems like Mage actually got what he wanted. Mm-hmm. But how much damage is there after Alexstrasza? So let's say he plays Alexstrasza, mm -hmm. and then the Ice Block is being uh, popped, and then you have to deal 15. There's like 3 plus 8. That's not enough. 
Yeah, that is not enough, but he can... It's very easy for the mage to draw into something, you know. Oh, actually... I might like the attack to face here and just hexing this. Yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. there's a fire. So that's that, that's game. Yeah, that might be good. Like... <laughs> yeah, it didn't matter in the end, I guess. I think a hex would have been good there. Oh, man. The two turn setup. I like it. That's another way to play Hearthstone. Again, not trading minions, but just trying to survive when you are able to set up the combo. Instead of drawing your whole deck, you just need a, a couple of key cards. Yeah. I mean, imagine if the Haunted Creeper was like a Priestess of Elune right now. <laughs> yeah. Just uh, even a Farseer. Yeah, even the Farseer, actually, to be honest. But actually, Farseer would have worked, right? It's 18 damage right now. True. Wait, yeah. Oh, is it? I, with yeah. the hero power, I think yeah, it's 18. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, man. You That's heard tough. it here first, guys. Priestess New of the Loon is a good card. New meta game. Yep. So that's over. Aran is not going to miss lethal. He is a top French player, player, but this is just the first match. So those guys, they banned one deck. Right now, this is the first game. Cam Aran is winning this, and he will keep his freeze mage for the next game. What is Maverick going to pick to counter this? Well, do we remember what Mavericks are play Maverick is playing? I'm not really sure I remember. I don't remember. Oh, man. Look, at, look at that crowd. I mean, they're really polite. They're all clapping, so it's really nice of them. The crowd is fine. Fine. I mean, the the colorful seats and uh, this. The, I was there before. It's a uh, very comfy and. Mm -hmm. Oh man, the warrior pick into the mage. Um, this is, I think, one of the most one-sided matchups in Hearthstone ever. For warrior. For warrior, yeah, one of the most one-sided. You just armor up. Every a turn. Lot. Yep. <laughs> yes. Every single turn. Well, you know, this is how Harson is uh, designed. Like, you have those decks uh, which are over good overall, but you have the, those decks who are ha having very good matchups versus uh, certain ones, mm -hmm. and there are counter matchups as well. And it's just like wow, kind of like I talked to some arena players in PvP, and they had the same 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 uh, reasoning kind of too. Like some matchups are just better for some classes. Like I'm not, I wasn't a big PvP player, I guess, so uh, I don't really know what's happening. But yeah, some, some classes just do have the edge against certain matchups, and you have to deal with it. Beast Cleave. Beast Cleave. Oh man, I, I know what that is. That's a burst built with Hunter and yeah, like yeah. Bloodlust. Tough. All right, so Warrior has a couple of cool, cool cards. Like early drops, you want to have them, but on the other hand, you want to... Armor up as much as possible, but you know the leper no. Mm -hmm. And uh, and a way for mage to win this matchup is actually to put like all these tiny minions that don't even matter and actually hit them in the face and keep the armor count low, right? I mean, if you look at this matchup just purely based on, you know, all the regular matchups, the only difference is that warrior can stack up armor, right? If if the armor if the warrior doesn't have armor, it's not the cards, right? It's just the armor. So if you can keep the armor count low to like, you know, 0 to 5 and then play Alex Rosa, you actually have a good chance. That's, however, is a big problem because all the warriors, th their, their minions have like 3 health, they have 4 health, they have like belchers. So that's the challenge of a mage. So basically the builds that Force and RDU was running at, um, at the... Viking cap was better because then you have a lot of minions you have duplicates you have, you can get like even six so at the uh, seed story cap you can get double Antonidas, double extraza so you can probably fight but uh, even though even then like uh, we've seen Gara having so much armor that mage was just running out of cards mm -hmm. like out of ways to just grind the armor down yeah it's certainly a pretty tough matchup for sure. So what do you say about Aran's hand as a mage? Is it okay versus this matchup, or did he just 
not draw into the correct cards, and he is on the spot right now. Yeah, um, it's pretty bad. There's no minions, right? So it is pretty bad. But then it's kind of how it's built. Like if he ran an Azric, I, I'm pretty sure that he would want it for next turn. But uh, for now, it's just like a typical freeze mage. You can't really do anything. You kind of want to ping off the armor to keep the armor low. But at the same time, what do you do if you do that? So it's just awkward all around. I think I would keep the Thalnos because Thalnos does represent like an extra frost bolt or an ice lance, depending if you cast like three or four spells. So it's actually one of the main burst um, scenarios. There is one silver bullet in the mage deck. That's uh, Antonidas. If you time Antonite as well, if you draw a couple of fireballs out of it, you might actually get the burst to, to be able to go through the warrior's armor. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. But other than that, warriors just comfortably armoring up, drawing some cards, you know, playing whatever. Well, I mean, in Warcraft lore, Garrosh that destroyed Jaina's hometown, so... Yeah, lore is correct, right, Nimsh? This is a spoiler. I haven't read that book yet. Oh, spoiler alert. Sorry, sorry. Nothing happened. Jaina and Garrosh are buddies. Yeah, they're still fine. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. In my, what I'm reading is like Jaina and Thrall, they're having secret meetings and talking a lot. Oh, secret meetings. I wonder what they're doing. This is PG6. They were talking. They were discussing Hearthstone strategies. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I, well, that's what I meant. Mage versus shaman. <laughs> Thra wasn't that happy about that matchup. Mm -hmm. Okay, I see. Well, uh, by the uh, way, there is oh, go one, ahead. one more card which is really cool as well. Lothab uh, against the mage. If they Alex tries it, if they feel like yeah, I will burst you next turn, you can play Lothab and disrupt the strategy, and maybe buy yourself enough time to escape the range. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're just so ahead already by, with this armor that the Lothab just basically steps on it. Like basically, the armor kicks the mage down onto the floor, and yeah, Lothab just steps on the face of the mage, so it's just that bad. Yeah, I, I like the Cairn here more. The Cairn is actually pretty good. And, Isn't uh, Mage going to a situation where he might actually not be able to draw cards? Like, he, he might be afraid to overdraw because he's still searching for the cards that, that he needs, like Antonidas and stuff, but mm -hmm. he has too many, like, secrets and weird stuff, like fireballs that he don't really want to use. Yeah, I mean, the only way I can see is that you use Ice Barrier this turn, and then you probably just... Do you Doomsayer this board i guess you do because the thing is like if you don't doomsayer now it feels like kind of hard to use i guess you could blizzard and doomsayer the turn after as well but um yeah this isn't, Dooms bad. isn't doomsayer just dead i mean it will tank a couple of da points of damage but other than that what what's the weapon it's fire war it's fire wars, yeah. but then the thing okay. is yeah it's it's like a doomsayer is dead in this matchup because of weapons and because of shield slams it, it, it this just doesn't survive, typically. So we are going to see a fireball to face to just um, get rid of an armor and also decrease the card count in your hand to be able to arcane intellect after that. It's really intriguing like how in this matchup, being a mage, you just search for those key cards. It's not about... Uh, you know, in most in most matchups, in most deck lists, you just throw the cards on the board. You just want to spam the minions. Whatever you get, like just play the key minions at key turns, those power turns, like four, five, six. But here it's so different. Like the game style and the gameplay of this, this, uh, this control mage is just intriguing. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So he is getting the combo pieces one by one. He got an ice block, he got Antonidas. Mm hmm. And will he be able to actually cycle the cards to get a couple of um, fireballs? I really like Antonidas into Frost Nova. He won't be able to do it next turn, but in two turns, possibly. Oh man, Rag is going to put a timer here. I think Rag is a very good play. You force your opponent to react to this immediately. 
yeah, you have to do something with it. A Maverick's board is really scary right now with such Belcher, hard to deal with, Cairn, hard to deal with, and Ragnaros just dealing so much damage every turn. Hmm. What would you do here? I mean, hmm. I guess you have to pray that uh, you just drop your Doomsayer, freeze it out, and maybe drop a Thalnos or something, so that you know, renderers might miss or something, or you just spend an Axe Charge or something. I don't know, it's just really bad, because we know on the other side there is Execute and Shield Slam, and just whatever the heck you want to kill Doomsayer, right? So, mm. Yeah, it's, it seems like Warrior has everything, all the means. And Lothab as well on top of it, jeez. Okay, a flame shark here is gonna only kill one creature effectively. Well, that creature kind of respawned as a one two, so it's still annoying. And wow, an armor smith, more armor, sign me up. How much damage is this? Wait, he can actually activate Grimash. Oh, he activate Grimash and he can actually proc ten. Block. Yeah, I like that. Thirteen. Yeah, I like it as well. It's like you just get rid of the of the block having twenty four points of health, like twenty eight plus six armor. Yeah, because if you put the block, they can't combo you. It's just, you can kiss can't. They won't be able to, to play Alexstrasza, so... I think this game is just over. Yeah. It certainly looks that way. I mean, obviously, it, that's why Warrior is a counter, because you don't care what Mage is doing. Just armor up, you can play those minions that are hard to deal with. And I, I feel like both players played it really well. Like, Aaron didn't get the cards that he needed. Like, he was in a bad position to start with. And uh, he would need to have a Miracles draw to be able to, to fight versus his warrior. He didn't, but even, even though he knew what he needs. Like, he was digging for the specific cards that could help him win. But, you know, he didn't get them. All right. Uh... Nah, I can just do anything you want, Maverick. I I'll probably just put down like Ezer or something. Even like Lothab, it's I I you could Lothab as well because if he outstrides you, he's dead. So I guess it's reasonable too. Whatever you want, my friend. Maverick is definitely in the driver's seat right now. Mm -hmm. Oh, Alex Straza, do you heal yourself? Oh, whoops! Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. I stood up by accident. You you got so excited by the Alex Straza draw? <laughs> I mean, it's a card, so yeah. Uh, hmm. I, I think you have the Cone of Cold, though. That's so much armor. So much armor. Oh, okay, yeah, fine. Okay, then Frost Nova. You, uh, Antonius and Frost Nova. Uh, yeah, I guess. I, I, agree that, I agree that Cone of Cold is actually pretty tasty. Tasty. Because you... Yeah. You will be able to kill Bane at the same time. Mm -hmm. So even though you're gi giving armor, you're just controlling the board, giving yourself time. But um, Doomsayer Nova seems okay. And uh, look at that. Wow. He doesn't, he doesn't have a way to, to stop this Doomsayer. He has double execute Lothab and Sarah. Yeah. Wait, wait, what just whoa, happened? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh! Oh, give your opponent the Doomsayer! And then the Doomsayer activates and kills everything. Oh my god, the place! That's not bad. That's the pretty cool. Place. He, he got rid of Sylvanas and the whole board like easily. Yeah. And he ensured that there is no way to remove this Doomsayer. Well, you okay. know, your, your, your opponent had four cards in hand, so... Oh, wow. Yeah, that was I've... pretty good. I like that. So guys, we're watching Aran and Maverick top French players, they, they are in top 8 right now, best of 5 series, they went through so many guys, 500 people playing in this tournament, Const like a lot of pros, known pros playing in this tournament, all pros are dead, mm -hmm. I mean they are still alive playing Harson I guess, but uh, oh, these, they are out These of are your new generation pros my friend. Oh yeah, they are, and I enjoy what I'm watching. Uh huh. So now what do you do against this Isera? He is still in trouble. Yeah, still very much in trouble. I mean, your opponent has 40 health. You have to do some shenanigans with Antonidas, I believe. So what, Antonidas and Frost Nova? 
it's a, it just really want to kill the Isera, but you can't. Yeah, if you have no way to deal with the Isera, you just have to ignore Isera. I mean, you're going to ignore four attack, because then even the fireworks is killing you. But at the same time, you have to, like, make a move. Like, we can see that Atenes Frost Nova is not that good because of a dream. Uh, but uh, uh, it's, it's hard. Well, you know, if you're in a really bad situation like this, you just have to assume that there are no good cards in your opponent's hand. Mm -hmm. And play the best play, assuming that there is nothing that's uh, destroying you. Oh, wow. That's a card. So what are you seeing? See a death pipe that's equipped now, and this can't go into the town. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 crazy. Now he definitely needs to heal with Alexstrasza, and then he is dead anyway. Well, he could use Court of Cold plus a Frostborn in the face. But yeah, he's pretty dead. <laughs> uh, I think Court of Cold plus. Uh, Plus frostbolt in the face and the sciences is fine, and that's really the only play. I think you just so, use ice lance as well because you do need to remove the armor anyways. Do you prolong the game to see one more card from Warrior? Because you know you will be facing. You know you lost this game. You know you will be fought, for, uh, facing Mavericks Warrior the next game. So do you want to stall maybe one, two more turns to see maybe one, two more cards? Maybe you will see a Geddon. That's information. That's important for the next deck that you are yeah. going. Oh, to Oh, he did the force in play. The force and play. <laughs> he did the force and play. Wait, force and actually won a game because of that play. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, this one's not going to be a force and play. It's uh, not that good. Then, huh? Hmm. I wonder what that frost nova was for. There was a chance that he will get the ice barrier. Was there? No, this is a nice. Oh, 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 really? Oh, uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He only played one, right? But no. I think he only played one ice barrier. Okay. But then he could tell what he had, so. Seems kind of weird. Right. Okay, this is over. I guess we're just running through the motions now. Uh, low thub, low thub. Oh, I guess you Alex Trasa yourself because you're staring at what, like 12 points of damage? So in theory, you're still alive. Oh. You can draw a card first, just in case. Sure. Just kill the 2 1, and then you're staring at like, what, 10 points of damage? Oh, wow, this is actually not terrible. Wait, you saw the card already? No! Nimsh, don't ruin it! I'm not saying anything. <laughs> okay. All right, they attack to draw a card. I'm almost out of cards, and but how, how is this not terrible? You're dead. Oh my god, I love it, and Fortune would love it as well. Oh my Look god! At this. The oh, BF finish. the BF finish! Oh, oh, oh the lethal. That's. Pretty sweet. Oh, that, that is pretty sick. Say. That is. Pretty oh man, sick. I I already love Maverick. Like I'm a fan. I just want to watch more games. Oh, get, both of the guys played really well, and you have the BM finish. Pretty well played. All right. So would you say that Maverick is more like Forsen? Because I mean, I rather the Forsen play, but. Dude, I feel the the spirit of Forsen in both of the players. Oh man. First, Aaron Aaron doing the Forsen play, and then Maverick doing the Forsen BM. Oh, that BM was pretty good. That yeah, that's is pretty sick. Oh, whoops. 10 out of 10. 10, 10 out of 10? 10. You rated 10 out of 10? That's the highest rating, yo. Okay, that's actually super high. Uh, let's say like 7 out of 10. What, 7 out of 10? I rated like 9 out of 10. Okay, because it's the first time we are seeing Maverick doing it, mm -hmm. 9 out of 10 is... Okay, 8 out of 10. Okay. 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 But here we see our lock. And we haven't seen Aran play, so we have to kind of guess along with Maverick. So what would your mulligan here? Would you keep the Acolyte? I, I pretty much won't keep the Acolyte. But he does it so anyways. 
Um, it's like Acolyte, when I was playing Warrior, uh, testing it, I felt like you need the draw. And Acolyte is the card that provides you a draw. Whatever you're facing, I okay. guess there is. So well, I don't hate keeping Acolyte. I think it's fine. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Maverick gets rewarded for it because it is a handlock, which is perfect. Well, you know, those players actually know each other and they respect themselves. So I'm sure that Maverick was able to scout as much as possible. Like, ah, okay. That actually makes sense too. So it's, it's really possible that both the players, they know the builds and they know what they are playing. Mm -hmm. Well, Acolyte seems like it's going to draw uh, two cards at least here. Oh, but if it's Shield Slam. Oh, you do want the armor for the juicy Shield Slam. Uh, yeah, certainly. I mean, this matchup is... Um, Warrior is... Like, Warlock is favored, and Warrior is in trouble, basically, in this matchup. And what you need, you need removal. You need the Shield Slam to be able to kill whatever big dude is coming out. And you need an Execute. And if you miss those cards, you might, you might just die to, like, a Twilight, a big Twilight Drake and fall up by a Mountain Giant. So you need to draw into those, guys, into those cards. And I think he actually got an Execute. Are you seeing an Execute? No. You no, will get an spoiler. execute. Oh my god, Nims, you are a god. I wait. I was waiting for that. Oh. Are you seeing execute now? Yeah, we saw, we saw execute a while ago, yeah. Okay, cool. God damn it, Nims. What a cheat. So execute was really important. That was a big top deck. That was pretty good. So right now he needs to stack up armor to be able to use the shield slam uh, at some point and kill something big as well. Yeah. And just, you know, develop a board a bit. Yeah, unfortunately, Arad doesn't have a second threat. Usually, how you win this matchup is that you draw, you have two threats back to back. Because it's very easy for the board to deal with the first one. But the second one might be quite hard because you do need, you do need execute and shield slam in the hand. So, yeah. Mm. Melchi is okay. I like it. Not that bad. Yeah, right now it's mostly about developing the board, playing some threats that can trade effectively, deal some damage, fight for the board position, and um, and at some point they will have to play the big guys. A warrior has an advantage if if he if warrior goes into end game with uh, and it doesn't run out of cards, he will get those top cards like Ragnaros, Alexstrasza, Isera, and we know that Maverick's uh, warrior is pretty legendary heavy. Like we are seeing Isera right now, just patiently waiting to be able to play it. And uh, the sweetest finish that you can do, being the warrior mm -hmm. against Handlock, is awakening, Gromash into awakening. Or like awakens. Is there awakens? Five damage to everything, clearing the board, and then attacking with Gromash for 10 more. That, that is a pretty good finish, I would say, yeah. So here, oh, you drew Lothab. Lothab into Lothab is usually a thing. Do you enjoy Lothab into Lothab action? Yeah, those mushrooms, man. Lothab is a mushroom man, right? People are spamming raccoons on the chat. What? What does raccoons have to do with mushrooms? I have no idea. Okay. Whoa, he decides to play nothing. That's really weird. Not even the Acolyte? Really? Wait, did he hear me? I think he heard me. I, nope. I hear you. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, he heard me. Okay, he heard me. Oh, you mean that the, the player heard you? The acolyte. Yeah, exactly. Do you think that we are actually on the mainstream when the guys are playing? Hi, mom. Wow, he has a bow and a hunter's mark. <laughs> oh my god, I have an update for all of us. Oh. Guys, guys. Kappa man actually advanced to top four. <gasps> yes! Yes, my man! <laughs> oh, man! And uh, he was playing versus Mr. Cedrus. And Mr. Cedrus is also a French player who is really renowned. And Kappa Man won 3 to 1 versus oh. uh, Mr. Cedrus. Man, we need, we just need to see Kappa Man play. Oh, man. I guess we ha can see his face. That's good. That is good. Like okay, it. so back to the game. Uh, well, do you. Hmm. Oh, this is awkward. Oh, she was slamming that. Okay, getting a card from the Ah, Okay. Oh! That's a card! Oh, wow. <laughs> That's a pretty good card to play. Oh, man. If you are playing this matchup. Oh, damn. Sick. 
Well, I give the edge to the warrior now to win the series. Yeah, do we know if he's playing Black Knight as well? No, we don't. Did we see it last game? I don't think we've seen no, the Black Knight. No, we didn't see it last game. But man, oh that my. is a card. Oh my god. So much value there. Oh, beautiful. Do you do the Kungan play, by the way, and play Ragnaros? Oh. Oh yeah, <laughs> Kungan did that. And he won, so, you know. Yes, he so, did. You know. That was so confusing for you that he misplayed as well. Shout out to Kungan, by the way. Yeah, Kungan is a great guy. Yeah. All right. This Acolyte is so important, by the way. He, he, like, Warrior was able to draw a lot of cards uh, just keeping up to Warlock. And Warlock has to spend life to draw cards. Uh -huh. That's why Warlock is down to 17 and Warrior is comfy on 30 health and 6 armor, which is amazing. Oh, Power of Warming. That's an interesting card. We don't see that every day nowadays. Yeah, a lot of people actually cut the card. Yeah, I mean, what is it but, for, right? You can't even you use the Lira Overwhelming Combo Burst anymore. So you can, yeah. you can use it with Shadow Flame, I believe. Yeah, you could. You could. Oh, another giant. Jeez. So, uh... I guess Aran's plan is to play the Giants first and then into Jiraxxus. Uh That's usually how Hadlocks go. Because, yeah, of course, once against you Jiraxxus, the Motors are severely dead cards. You can't even play them anymore. Uh, and, you know, Aran does have a Hellfire. So if it can somehow chain some Hellfires into, like, double Molten Giants into Jiraxxus, then it might be pretty good for him. However, he has to solve this little crisis first, which is the board state. Uh, it's not looking pretty good for him. Alright, he's gonna put a wall of taunts. That's one way to do it. I'm just checking a couple of updates. Uh, yeah, so sure. I'll, I will join you in a moment. So here, Maverick can actually um, drop the Izera here. Izera's pretty good, not that bad. Uh, he could also just YOLO Brawl, which is pretty bad. Alexstrasza does nothing. It's just a giant, so... Yeah, I, I would say Alexstrasza might... Uh, no, I would say Izera is the best. Because even though it dies to Siphon, anything dies to Siphon, you have um, you have a card that comes back. You know? Alright. If he does Alexstrasza here, oh, he effectively showed Alexstrasza. Because there's no spell, no, no card in the warrior deck that targets the face. So I basically showed it. So, let, why, why Alexstrasza here is really bad is because the opponent can just trade and just kill the Alexstrasza. Especially with what um, with uh, what Maverick is doing now. Oh, actually, can you? Tr I guess you. Hmm. So you overwhelming the two three, attack the Alstraza. You Hellfire, so that's five mana, and the Molten Giants will be at two. So yeah, I, I think that's a good play. Uh, you overwhelming the Argus, and then you uh, attack Hellfire, and then drop two Giants. Uh, that paves the way for a good Jiraxxus. You can even tap first, of course. Why not? Uh, it seems like it's pretty... Oh, no, it's going to be a Siphon Soul instead. Okay, Hi. I'm back. Hello, welcome back. Uh, I, I guess it's reasonable to like do that combo thing one turn later, as long as you have Siphon Soul. So, hmm, I guess that's okay. Oh my god, he gets a dream card. Or am I in the future again? Oh man, the warrior is gonna. Warrior is like so ahead here. Like Aran needs to make his move somewhat quickly. He can't just like set it so all the time. I think he needs to like commit. Cause like why would you why would you not siphon so? I mean, looking like, at it, Sarah, you want to deal with it. Yeah, right? yeah but he siphon so the Alistrada last turn, which I don't really like. Cause like. Oh, you you can possibly silence this, Sarah, because you just you're just leaving a four twelve, which is not that threatening, especially if you have the wall of taunts. So I I like the silence in here. I just don't like seven swords when you have uh, molten giants. I just want like another way to deal with stuff. Yeah, I, I I agree. I agree, it's fine. Also, like, we would probably want to leave Siphon Soul for a possible Ragnaros. Yeah. You know that warriors are playing Ragnaros, and then this Isera seems like a bait. Do you, do you oh. like, dream your own Isera and play it again? 
You actually could, I guess, huh? Mm. Unsilence it for 90 mana and do 4 damage. I guess that's alright. That's not terrible. It's not, te yeah, it's not that bad. But I do like uh, Aras play just now. I don't like the first Siphon Soul, but I do like the second. Don't use Siphon Soul. Just don't use your Siphon Souls where you have Water Giants. Um. Yeah, oh I wow! Is he it. going. He's going for the. No, no, no spoiler control? alert! No spoiler alert! Okay, no spoiler. But this is going to be a. Oh bold my god! Play. He's gonna go for it! Oh. All right. Wow. Do I want to give him his blessing? Do I want to give Maverick the blessing? All right, I'll bless him. God damn it! I hereby bless the Yolo rag. That was a pretty good play, by the way, mm. because whatever, he, what like only the Iron Beak was a bad hit. Like if you hit face, you win. Mm. If you hit a mountain giant, multi giant, you're still in a good shape, and you have like this board is just crazy. An eight eight Ragnaros, six seven Sarah, and a two two Chask oh, Master. And you know what? The Shadow Flame was burned, so that was huge as well. I agree. That was this huge. this game might be over. Oh man. I, I I just need to follow Maverick on Twitter. Like I want to This want guy, to man. Ah <laughs> oh, to the face. Hmm, so what to do here? Wow. You know, I have a, I have a feeling that we are actually missing missing out a lot. Like those guys are mostly playing in the French tournaments without English cast. Mm -hmm. And I would love to see more of those games. Like, this is this is exciting. This is some good Carson we are watching there, right now. Yeah, I'm enjoying myself. Siphon soul on the Oh man, what do you do? What do you do? Do you mortal coil? Yeah, you have to build the wall. Uh... But then again, there is silence and the bro. And a lot a of draw. A lot. Oh man. Oh, wait, is this is this lethal? Do we see lethal here? With the axe. Uh. <laughs> With the axe. <laughs> um, not quite, I guess, huh? No, 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 no. But still, if you if you get a very good brawl, do you do you even brawl? Do you I even think brawl? You draw first. I think you draw first. I I think you draw first too. Cause if you get a mm. shield slam. If you get shield slam, can you actually? You can't win the game yet. Mm. Can you equip a weapon into your opponent's hero and then Harrison Jones it? Yeah, you could. You could. If you're if you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think yeah. I th I think I like the draw first. You still have like uh one shield slam, one execute. Um, could do some funky stuff. But I also like how, how he is not drawing first, but calculating his options. Because there may, there might have be a better play to just play what you have in hand, mm -hmm. and then you just regret that you spent free mana to draw a card. Yeah, it's so good to like double check, right? I mean, I don't think Harris is gonna come down here. Oh no, that's a dead card. So what's the best minion you can get? Eight eight. Uh, oh, he's playing around guess. Black Knight and getting a. Okay, I'm a bit ahead again. So yeah. Ah, yeah. oh, spoiler alert! He's gonna copy the easy era. <laughs> but I, I think it's reasonable. I think it's reasonable. Like a six eleven, it's pretty fat. Not that bad. Yeah, it's oh, hard wow. to kill. It's it's certainly better than the molten giant. Also, you're playing around black knight a bit. If uh, I mean, not many handlocks are playing black knight, but if they are, you're making a sneaky play here. Mm -hmm. Oh, sneaky. Okay, yeah, I like that. That was so sneaky. Double silence the Sarah. Oh, uh, we pretty much see a uh, clear here, but we don't know how he's going to clear this. I mean, Hellfire. So. F mm. Oh, man. He wishes to have that Shadow Flame that was burned. Oh, the Shadow Flame burn was so, so important. In control matchups, Shadow Flame is one of the best, uh, best cards. Okay. Okay. Just draw a card, I guess. Yeah. But what can you draw? I mean, Seven Souls are already used. 
It just seems like you don't have a lot left. Is it Grimash lethal? No, Grimash is not lethal yet. So. Hmm. Unless you tap. Attack in Soulfire and then drop a. Uh, he wanted he wanted to have a better chance not to discard Jaraxxus. That's why he dropped the uh, Twilight oh, Drake. Oh no! Oh no! The Drake is de uh, the Jaraxxus is dead. He didn't get to use his Farseer. That is a face knuckle. He didn't really face palm. He just face knuckled. So. Um, yeah, kind of. Yeah. Aran is definitely unhappy. Mm, this you, this was you, an important match. Like Handlock is favored versus Warrior. And if you're able to win versus Warrior, you, you can be on a very good way to actually win the best of five with the wins and a handlock mm -hmm. and a lot of decks left. But uh, if he loses this, and it certainly looks that way, that he will lose this matchup, then he might be in a very bad spot with the last deck. Like Another deck he picks after this handlock is his last deck. He still has two to, to choose from, but he won't be able to change it. Like He will have to win uh, two games straight after that. Oh, interesting. He uses the armor instead of using Harrison. Mm. Well, he just seen Jaraxxus, so... Mm. Okay, I, I guess that's fine in a way. I mean, you're kind of ahead. But I, I would have preferred a Harrison there. I guess he values no, no, the no. armor up. I, I, I agree that Harrison was a better play. Maybe he missed the fact that Jaraxxus was discarded by so far. Oh. Yeah, maybe you're so, like, in... Just so focused, I guess. Maybe. Oh man, this would be such a different game if there was still Jaraxxus. <laughs> yeah. Because we see the, um, the Iron Beak for the, um, for the Sylvanas, right? So. Huh. Oh my god, the Giant Class 9, that is so gross. Do you still play it? Yeah. <laughs> Do you tap and get... No, 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 no. He plays around a possible Gromash Taskmaster? No, no, no not no, really. No. You, you go for the giant, right? What? Oh, I don't like that. You don't even play on Gromash by doing that. Uh, yeah, I don't like that. There is a second, second copy of Shadow Flame. Mm -hmm. But does it change anything? No. You might as well just equip the axe now. You have two mana. Hmm. Okay, never mind. I guess you don't. It's interesting how players actually run out of cards. Yeah, the hammock is just running out of cards. The like warrior as well. Warrior is uh no, 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 it looks like eight cards or nine cards to me. He did draw a lot with his uh, acolyte and stuff like that. So yeah. Oh yeah, I mean hand cards, like the cards in oh, hand. Oh, the cards in hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought you meant cards in deck. The who to to is gonna come down, and we're gonna be a bit sad when the Sylvanas comes down. Uh, I mean, even the brawl here is perfectly fine. Well, I can just face tank the um the giant here with the axe. But I think the Sylvanas is just a bit stronger. Sylvanas better. Mm -hmm. I mean, two two iron beasts are gone already. And you can kind of also count, uh, two sciences, right? So it's not gonna go anywhere. So this is lethal next turn, unless. Aran wants uh, Alex Straza as well, but even then, um, it's oh, is is that gonna help? Is the Belcher gonna help? Belcher might help, but uh, by the way, this Giant's positioning is kind of awkward. You could probably just Argus the the Iron Beak and Farseer, and then play Belcher, and that will be in the attack with the Giant. That will look pretty good. Oh, but, but right now. Die? No, with the taunts? Oh, yeah, 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 you do die. Oh, right. okay. I guess you can trade no, with, if they care. Well, no, with Belcher, you don't die then. Oh, yeah, right yeah, that's true, that's to... true. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so, I guess so. Yeah. He could also taunt the, the, the Belcher and the Iron Week, but I, I guess it's fine still. Yeah. Like, I feel like uh, Aran, if he played the Giant, like, one turn earlier, in that turn that I said he should play it, uh, it might have been, things might have been a little bit different. But we can definitely see that it's lethal here. Um, I'm sure Maverick sees it. Let's, let's see how he finishes his opponent. Look at Maverick. He's so excited about this win. Wow. Yeah, he is. Look at that. 
All right, so Maverick is going to take game number three or four, is game it? Game number three, yeah. Two straight wins yeah, with the three. Warrior. And, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much... Uh, he played Warrior pretty well. I liked it. There's, there's uh, the YOLO play with the Rag. It was uh, one we didn't see. I think that won the game. Getting big in Hunter was pretty important. And also, mm -hmm. Aran got unlucky with the Jaraxxus. But uh, both players are playing top Hearthstone, and I'm really enjoying it, so... Right oh. now, the score the score is not updated yet. Oh, it, it's not updated yet, but we're going right in the game, man. No breaks, my friends. No breaks. So, no it's going to be a mirror match. And did Maverick reveal the Harrison? I don't think he did. He didn't? Yeah. But, oh, I oh, mean, wow. there, oh, there might be, like, previous matches that... Oh, my God. Two Harrisons. So... Huh. Who's going to... Play the first Harrison. Who's gonna play the first Harrison? I think the person who plays the first Harrison just uh, is so ahead. By the way, for Aaron to win this match, he has to win two games with this word deck. He can't lose. If he loses, he's out of the tournament. Mm -hmm. So, what's important in this matchup, Amas? How do you win? Do you win by armor? Do you yeah, win by. Yeah. Before, uh, before I did not know how to play the warrior matchup at all. But I have, I fortunately have some friends and pros and even chat in uh, explaining. Uh, you basically want to make the full use of your cards, like full use. So, example, if you have an acolyte of three, you do, you actually don't play it because you want to like taskmaster it or something like that. Otherwise, it just trades for the axe, and you're not tr you're trading two for one. For example, it's a very slow match. You probably want to armor up every turn because you just want to guarantee that each card gets its full value. So, you know, some people don't like watching a warrior mirror because, oh, it's just armor and pass, armor and pass. But that's basically how you win. You need to squeeze in every single ounce of value out of your cards. So on a scale from one to a resident sleeper, how would you rate this matchup? Uh, I would rate it... A uh, nymph joke. It's Touché. not that bad. Like <laughs> it, 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 it gets pretty eh at the start, but sometimes it gets exciting at the end. So, yeah. well, there are there are also ways to make it more exciting. Sometimes you can actually go aggro. Like um, if you have a specific hand with some minions, you can try to just just play whatever you have and start doing damage. Uh, also, like if you have Ragnaros, you know sometimes you just are able to push before they do and uh, and just win that way. Okay. So it's not always the armor up, armor up. It's obviously the the, the most uh, basic strategy and right. probably the best one, because the aggro one uh, depends on the on the cards you get. And I mean, the the, the good thing is uh, also that both players right now, they actually understand the matchup. They're not going like super ham like uh, dropping minis every single turn. I think the aggressive path is a good path to take, if you have a specific hand makeup you know if you have like yeah. you know weapon into weapon into 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 such belcher maybe into karen or yeah, sylvanas yeah. Into... and then and then alex Straza, you know stuff like that but it's really specific i think yeah well right now we are going to see mostly like minion trading and karen is one of the best cards you can play in this matchup mm -hmm. really hard to deal with very annoying but we do see sylvanas on the other side so and That's the faceless way oh my god faceless like the, the, not, not only, yeah, that, that's actually a good point in just saying, yeah, faceless, because it reminded me that not only is it be, uh, the right place that will get you far, it's the deck choices, right? The greedy uh, warrior usually wins. So the one that curves higher will be fine, because, I mean, obviously, if you're just armoring up every single t uh, every single turn at the start, then uh, the person with more facelesses and more big games wins the game. We know Maverick is running one big game, right? So that's his edge in the mirror. But then we see Aran, he has a uh, faceless, which is his edge in the mirror. So which deck is more greedy? Like we're seeing Isera on uh, both, oh, both sides. Players, yeah, both, both players are being pretty greedy right now. So as, I guess uh, when we see more cards and the decks come out, we'll see that who's curving more greedy. But for now, it's pretty even, I guess. By the way, the death rattle rules have changed. So now whoever played the card first, the death rattle triggers first. So if this Karen is getting to kill Sylvanas, then Karen triggers first, we get a Bane token, and then Sylvanas triggers next, and she steals the Bane token. 
But, wow. If he does that play, I'm gonna be, um... That's really good. I, I actually think that... Like, okay, most people might go like, Oh, I just put a Belcher and just attack the face, right? But that would've been terrible, because you can shield slab your old Sylvanas to get a fully healthy Cairn. So, one of the actually good plays is just to sacrifice the Cairn into the Sylvanas. And then, um... You know, let him trade something. This is another play. He can also Taskmaster. And sacrifice it this way. Because you just don't want your opponent to have a chance of stealing a full uh, full big body. So now, obviously, he didn't want to see that. But he had a 50% chance of making it work out. So I do like that play. Although I necessarily wouldn't have went to that play. I Maybe, if I was playing, I would have just attacked with the Karen. And then put the Sludge Belcher down or something like that. I like the play. I like the play as well. Uh, he had a very good chance. Like he had fifty percent to have a very nice outcome, mm -hmm. and even even though he lost it, I don't feel that it's that damaging, because he he was able to get rid of the Sylvanas, and he's facing a four five blank mm -hmm. dude right now. It's like he's facing a Yeti, and it's not that scary. Like I I, I think this this uh, position is already the mid game where people have a lot of choices and this is where it starts to get interesting i mean sure the first six turns were kind of like not that in interesting but now it starts to really get interesting you have so many options uh you do not want to you know waste so many waste a lot of cards on these silly minions that don't do anything the main objective of these uh belchers and two twos and whatnot is to just waste your opponent's uh, resources right so you don't want it to get uh too intrusive for the bigger guys later on so who is winning the game right now? Is it like Cleary Aran who is having Alex Straza damage? Yeah, I would say that Aran does have the advantage here because uh, not only did, did the Sylvanas give him a lot of temple, he does have the faceless into one of the dragons. So uh, you just don't expect both of your nine drops to get killed. You expect the first one to get killed, sure, but the second one you don't expect to get killed. And if it doesn't happen, then you can faceless it, uh, and then just go to town, really. Oh, wow, is this, Ooh. is this Alex Straza turn? Oh, you're a bit ahead again. I think this is Alex Straza turn. I think it's Alex Straza turn too. It's so much damage. Oh my god. That's like 9 plus 7. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. 9 plus 7 is a lot. Oh, wow. He is actually going to kill Lotha. What? What? Really? Oh, okay, okay, interesting. Well, you know what this tells me? This tells me that he might want to set up for the Yzera, uh faceless play. Hmm. Okay. Hmm, this game is really interesting, like the, the back and forth. Mm -hmm. Right now he has so many cards he can use to deal with this. Okay. And uh, he, somehow he was able to protect Alexstrasza by uh, that line of play. Yep. Well, that was a very close up, I guess. I don't know why. Uh, Black Knight here is gonna be crazy because the axe clears the slime and there's eight damage to the face, removing all armor. So shield slam is no longer an out. We might need to see another Kit Kat's play by Maverick. <laughs> I think it's a correct play. Go for Kit Kat's play. Go for the Kit Kat's play. Unless you play also like another minion and go for a Maverick play. Oh, okay. Do the Maverick. So Kit Kats or Maverick, what is it gonna be? Uh hmm. I think he has to do it, yeah. I mean we're I mean, looking at got... other options, but it doesn't seem good. Alright. I think you do it you do it with the acolytes. You do it with the acolyte? Oh, I think you do it with the RSF. Uh, oh no! Oh no, oh, you do not have yeah. Kit Kats insurance if you use the acolyte. Well, you're doing the Maverick. Is oh, the, Maverick the Maverick good? Okay. This is the Maverick play, huh? Okay. All right. Let's uh, see it. Let's... No, uh, Nimsh, stop! Uh, Why'd you ruin it? You ruined it, Nimsh. Ah, uh, Nimsh, you spoiler alert. I I'm gonna have to ban you from chat. I didn't say anything. You Come said, on. oh. <laughs> that oh. could have been everything. No, spoiler why. alert, guys. Chat, do you guys agree that we should like ban Nimsh? I think we should. Yeah, if you want to ban Nimsh, type one. If you if you want to keep Nimsh in the chat, uh, give me a Kappa man. That's that's not fair. People just like to spam Kappa, okay? God damn it, Nimsh. 
God damn it. Oh wow, Kappelman is just the best guy ever. You didn't even see him yet. You didn't even meet him. What the hell? <laughs> I'm his biggest fan right now. Oh man. Okay, let's see the bracket in the meantime. The secret bracket. Mm -hmm. So Kappa Man is patiently waiting in top four for the winner of Deflor and Derlick. Oh my god, Kappa Man can play versus Deflor. That wow. would be so cool. That would be pretty cool, yeah. Oh, we see BGH in the Hallock. Wow. It's like Maverick just loves BGH. Just put it in every single deck, you know? That's 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 his uh that's his strategy. And uh, yeah, we see a reverse matchup here. We see a Hadlock versus a Warrior. You know what? I, you know what I like? I like that the control players actually got out of the Swiss. That's what I like. We're not seeing like Zoo on Hunter, you know. Yeah, basically, if you, if you're getting uh, to those high rounds, the players who are favoring control, I think they are just coming on top. Mm -hmm. And Hadlock is such a strong deck. Wow. Also, Warrior. Okay, back to answering your question, Nimsh. Around stack is so greedy. Look at that. Look at the BGH. He's playing BGH and Faceless. And that's all the he, six that's, drops. That's why he won. That, we said it. That, that, yeah. The greedy warrior would win the match. And that's, uh, true. that's why he won. That, that greed, man. And you know what? Maverick is in a world of trouble. Oh my god. I would, I would agree with that. Hmm. So we, we already explained this matchup. It's like Warrior needs to have removal. Mm -hmm. and Warlock wants to just play cards on the board, like big, guy, big guys. Mm -hmm. Do you think Aran will be able to remove um, the Twilight Drake easily? Not currently, but uh, with the uh, Taskmaster, it's pretty easy for him to draw into something. Oh, that's a tease. Don't get teased. Okay, thank you. You usually drop the Twilight Drake first. Uh, Instead, like, uh, maybe in the Shaman matchup, you want to drop the Giant because uh, Giant only loses to Hex and Twilight loses to Hex and Earth Earthshock. So, yeah, but then usually, just typically, you want to drop Twilight Drake first. So, Aaron wants to dig for some removal cards. Mm -hmm. And did he get it? Nims, no spoiler, Reno, and nope. No spoilerino on my side. I will be careful this time. Mm -hmm. So we know that the Maverick play doesn't work. So guys, don't try it at home <laughs> while playing Hearthstone. Oh man. So uh, here Maverick can tap into Giants. You could um, do a Belcher. Sure, Belcher works too. Oh my God! He's going for the Hellfire play. Why are singing? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the Hellfire Trigger is thinking that. Oh, well, you know what's interesting is that he can actually um, coil the Acolyte and then Hellfire to make your opponent overdraw. That could be pretty fun. That would be so next level. That could be fun. And then we have 16 turns of a Resident Sleeper and after that, 17 turn is a <laughs> Fatigue <you. laughs> Oh, man. No, I don't think so. Oh, my God. Just... The Execute is a good draw. So you can Execute and play a 5 drop, for example. Wow. It's not bad. That is actually huge because he has the BGH for for giant next turn. Oh no. Well. This... Well, Maverick still has Sylvanas and Slash Belcher, so those are the cards he can play to uh, extend his board presence. But mm -hmm. he needs something else. He needs a Twilight Drake. He needs a Twilight Drake. Yeah, Twilight Drake would be good. God damn it, Nims. <laughs> oh wow, he gets a Twilight Drake. Look at that. Alright, there you go, guys. Nims is a fortune teller. If you want the obvious foretold, just send uh, $20 to his uh, donation. Captain Nims, obvious. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Amaz, what do you do being a warrior? Well, you drew an execute, so you're pretty happy about it, right? That's a sick top deck. <laughs> that is pretty sick. Well, is there any way to utilize armor? I guess you have to use the execute, and you're happy about it. I guess you're pretty happy trading an armor spit for a 410. Like, are you joking? That's pretty damn good. One mana deals 9 damage. Oh, wow. Uh, 
Look at this giant. Oh, wow. So he can double giant, actually. Yeah, like I enjoy 3 drop, which is an 8 8. A 4 drop, 8 8, 4 drop is also not that bad. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, you, you would think so. Yeah, it's not that bad, right? Uh, Are you playing around Brawl? Or do you no. just. I think you just yellow. Just play you, you, double you giant. You yellow double giant, yeah. Because, I mean, does it, does it, your opponent really want to brawl his own voucher? I don't think so. I think it's such a nice play because you've seen double execute. Mm -hmm. And then there is not enough armor. So the only card that stops you is the brawl and possible BGH. Let's see Maverick's face. Yeah, Maverick is shot. Oh, he is so oh he's, he's so focused. He did not even flinch. He I mean, actually moved the best. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> uh pretty uneasy. And uh Right now Maverick Smith. Right now Maverick actually got closer to the PC to be able to see any chance of winning in his hand. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what he's seeing. What are you seeing? Uh, you mean from Maverick's side? Yeah, from Maverick's side, you, you just lost, uh, I believe you will lose the second giant as well. Uh -huh. So you lost the giants, you lost the Twilight Drakes. Oh yeah, you did lose it, huh? Okay. It, it, how, it, the how... giant just died. So basically you need to either do some shenanigans with Molten Giants or you need to judge your axis. Oh my god, okay. That, oh, wow! That is pretty decent, I would say. But do you Sylvanas here instead? I think you play Sylvanas. And the with, so many, as well. with so many minions, it's... That was a play, but... I like the other possibility that you're going to see in a moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's reasonable. It's alright. Alright, so uh, Aran over there just drew a silence. Uh, it's gonna do... Yeah, you know, a little work. But I know, you, you know what's a great combo is named? It's Sylvanas into Shadow Flame. I love it. Sylvanas into Shadow Yeah, that's, that's a sick play. Mm -hmm. it, won you, it won you a match, right? And I wasn't even that Warlock. Oh, man. Yeah, you, you're a priest. Oh, yeah. I like that play. But, uh, yeah, but then over at Aran's side, I mean, you don't want to play a rag. Because, you know... Most in giant shenanigans and it's bad. You don't even have a brawl in your hand, so you know you kind of have to be a bit, is you know just a bit more worrisome. Okay, so I guess uh, both me and Amaz are checking the updates, mm -hmm. and um, we just need to make uh, ensure if we have an interview after this match. Do we interview Maverick or Aran or? Do we just go with another game for you guys? Right now, it seems that uh, Maverick is in trouble. There are not that many cards in uh, Aran's hand, but still, most of the threats will, were dealt with. Yeah, I mean, he's not really scared of Execute anymore because there's no more. There's only one more Shield Slam. Uh, that's the only... That's the last removal. And I guess that is... I, I don't know. I, do you like the Giant there? I don't hate it because you, you've seen a lot of removal being used. Uh huh. I don't love it because a Belcher would have been so much better. Mm. The Giant did tank 8 points of damage. Yeah. Well, uh, so here, if the Rag hits the Molten Giant, it'll be huge. Okay, that's pretty huge. But uh, we, see, we do see a BGH on the other side. So it's going to even the, it's gonna even this game up. Yeah, possibly uh, BGH into into Belcher, into Silence even. Could be good. Wow. Do you think there's still a way for the Handlock to win this game? I think there actually is. It, it looks pretty good now, to be honest. The BGH onto the Rag was pretty important. And the, beach, the, B, the Rag hitting the uh, the Molten Giant was... You, you, you would think that it's good to hit the Molten Giant, but then if it hit the face, then it could be pretty scary, especially with the Silence, you know? Well, right now it's it seems like Warrior Scan is not that great. He has the minions. Uh, Sylvanas might be the best choice, but um, Maverick can deal with whatever is being played. Like if Sarah is being played, he can just siphon solid. Mm -hmm. And uh, Maverick is slowly getting the game back 
uh, on his track. I mean, he still has the Belcher. He still has his own Savannahs. One Molten Giant. Yeah, definitely looks pretty good. You can actually deal with this board pretty effectively with a Shadow Flame. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I would assume so, yes. And then put yourself into a winning position. Oh my god, this is Handlog is such a strong deck. It's incredible. So what do you do here? Do you sacrifice your whole board and then play something else? I believe so. This is three minions. That was, that's a pretty good shadow flame. And then after that, you still have six. You, have, you still have six mana to play whatever. Oh what? Oh yeah, attack the face, please. Yes, attack the face. Yes. Yeah. Oh come on, those are good players, like top French players. Okay, okay, okay. They are making pretty good plays overall. This is really good. I I, I love this. I'm loving this match. Another eight eight free drop. Hello, handlock. Ah, <laughs> uh, silly eight eights. Alexstrasza, uh, not that good. Alexstrasza will be really easy to deal with. Yeah, I guess Isera is the best. Oh, he does it anyways, okay. Well then. One damage, it's an Elven Archer that costs 9 mana. Wow. Would you play Elven Archer that costs 9 mana? Elven Archer that costs 9 mana? Yeah. No. Yeah, me neither. Well, uh, Aran needs uh, something here. Belcher what do you think? Isn't really the thing. What do you think about not playing the Shares? Um, uh, not Shares. Not very. The Sun Fury Protector. Oh, Sun Fury no, Protector. the yeah Maverick like didn't play uh, Protector. He wanted mm -hmm. to play around Black Knight, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, I mean, it's black. The leftmost card in Aran's hat could just be a Black Knight right now, right? I mean, we we know it's a Harrison, but Maverick knows it's a card that he didn't play for ages. So if he actually baits the Black Knight with the uh, Belcher first, that might be a pretty good play. What do you think about playing Sylvanas and uh, taunting Sylvanas? Hmm. That could be pretty good. You just then saw Smallbreaker the Silence. So, yeah. So he is definitely also playing around Black Knight with this play, huh? Interesting. You do want to play around the uh, Grimosh combo too. Because there is that one card that your opponent didn't use forever. So you have to, you know, your your alert has to go a little bit off. Oh man, like this this game just went from warrior having oh, all the cards. Oh no! Uh, oh my God, Laffy sister on the other side and Jaraxxus in Maverick's yeah. side. That is that is the biggest swing I've ever seen. Well, I have to say that Aran was pretty lucky with the executes and it seemed like he's pushing the game forward and getting going for the win. But oh. right now, Maverick has all the tools, like all the tools to deal with this board easily mm -hmm. and to finish the game in the next, what, what, one more, two more turns, like this and another one. You How know, much he can actually steal the Zero right now and uh, save either Jaraxxus or Siphon. And I think that's a good play. So you just um you know hit this and then drop Sylvanas, uh Mortal Coil and then Soulfire. And then discard Jaraxxus. If you discard Jaraxxus, it's perfectly fine because you have Siphon Soul. You just don't want both of them gone, and Soulfire only kills one of them. If not, if maybe it just destroys like a Belcher. Who cares, right? That do you want to steal Alec uh, Isera now, or do you want to uh, keep Sylvanas for a Ragnaros possibly? Well, the Ragnaros was dead already. Okay, I, I think he's going for your play. I think. Wow! I like wow! It. No! 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 Uh, wait! No! Uh, 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 don't! No! No! Don't spoil it. I'm not spoiling it. Okay. Do you see what I uh, see? Okay. Who to 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 it? Okay. Wow! This game is over. Uh, I mean, it's not over on my side, but it's like I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm not seeing a way to to win it. No. Uh, being okay. around. Yep. Well, I guess Maverick takes this, and he is going to go to the best uh, to the to the round of four, where Kappa Man is already waiting for him. Oh man, that would be a Wait, match. Actually, Kappa Man is not playing versus Maverick. Maverick wow. will be playing versus Brainstorm. Okay, was able to win versus Fane. Mm -hmm. So our top four will be Brainstorm, Maverick. Cap Y, which is Kappa Man, and Deathlord from Greece. Oh, and, and Deathlord won? Yeah, Deathlord won, so Deathlord will be playing versus Cap Oh, y's wow. Damn. Okay. Well, this is certainly a pretty good top four. And guys, 
the the person who loses now, which is uh, wait, wait what did they lose? They are they're fifty eight, right? They lost in the round of eight. Yeah, they will yeah, go right. home of eighty euros, but if they win this match, they're guaranteed at least three hundred for a possible three thousand euro paycheck. So that's pretty sweet. Yeah, that's a big jump, but that's some serious money right there. Mm -hmm. I mean, three hundred euros, eighty euros is still good. 80 As euros? we said, and heroes is pretty good, right? Yeah, it's reasonable. Well, especially if you are living in Paris, it's just you just got here, you played some Hearthstone, met some players, made some friends, and you're leaving with like eighty euros. Mm -hmm. All right, Amas, I'm going to um, interview some players. Okay. So um, keep the viewers with us, and uh, I'm hope I'm, I hope that everybody's enjoying this. Oh, and right. let's go. I will be I will be interviewing the guys. So, see you in a moment. See you soon, Nimsh. Alright, so 